to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. Today is our book club slash review slash off tangent whatever um, about Blood Reaver, the second book in the uh, Night Lords trilogy. So uh, if you enjoyed today's podcast, head on over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. And Bricky, I believe you have something special to tell the peoples. Yes, uh, if you would like to check out merchandise, go check out Orchidate.com. But we are not going to spend too much time on Patreon or merch because we have a sponsor for today's episode. Roll the clip! This episode of Adeptus Ridiculous is sponsored by Magic Spoon Cereal. Now, as a kid, I would easily down multiple bowls of all the kinds of really sugary cereal. But as an adult, I'm aware that not only is it a little bit much sugar wise, but I just can't keep eating that stuff. As I'm getting older and metabolism is also getting older, I'm trying to cut down on things like sugar, carbs, just unhealthy food in general. And Magic Spoon is a great way to combine both the taste of kids cereal with something that won't absolutely destroy you. One serving, which is one cup of Magic Spoon is zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, only four net grams of carbs, and only 140 calories. It's got that nice in between where it's sweet, but it's not like heart attack cafe deep fried butter sweet like some of the other cereals are. You still get that feeling from a Kim, but it's not like removing the top of your mouth. They also have a ton of other flavors in different packs like cocoa, peanut butter, frosted, fruity, and they also have a bunch of other side flavors as well that you can try out. It's really good. I love the amount of protein that's in it and the low calorie count. And it's a ton of other things like, shit, what was it? Keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, and low carb. Go ahead and click the link below to try out the variety pack. You can use code ADRID for $5 off your purchase or just go to magicspoon.com slash ADRID. It's all in the description. Go down there, check it out. It's legitimately worth the money. I actually ate a bowl of Magic Spoon earlier today and oh. I'm, feeling, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling good. I did the, the frosted one. I think it's probably my favorite. Normally okay. I like cocoa, but I think it reminds me of like really old school, like Frosted Flakes. Yeah, so I, it's like good. I had it like, I want to say two months ago. Um, and that was back when they had like an exclusive flavor. I forget what it was, though. Um, but the cinnamon was really good. I'm a, I'm a sucker for like cinnamon cereal. So, yeah, I, I really like my cinnamon cereal, too. You know who else likes cinnamon cereal? Hmm. The, the, the Night Lords. I don't know. I didn't have a good Dean Kamen for that one. <laughs> I was trying to be like, where's he going with this? Like, what the f Off a cliff, just like the creator of the I segue. Was, I was like the cinnamon toast crunch chef on the on the box? Him? I is, is there a cinnamon toast crunch chef? Yeah, you know, these he's like the he's kind of the the fat dude with the the hat and the I think he has like a white mustache or something. Man, I don't. Man, I got. I got. You know, Blood Reaver. Yeah, but Blood Reaver though. Blood yeah, Reaver though. Great book. Yes, uh, we were supposed to talk about this earlier, but I got sick, and yeah. so now it's. Remember when we were like, "Oh, we'll do it in two weeks, and then do the next <laughs> one next month." Now we're just, we're just doing it normal at this yep. point. Yep. Unforeseen things. You can't help it. You uh, can't. It's great that you're feeling better though, because strep throat sucks. I think we already discussed that in the last episode. Strep it, throat. We blows. did. It is awful. Just awful. Yeah. I, uh, I but luckily might I had need, audiobooks. I might need a f a, a, a few refreshers here and there because it's been a couple weeks since I finished it and I didn't get the chance to reread it. But I think we'll be good for the most. I part. think we'll be good. I yeah. I reread it, so I finished it a few months back and I reread it for this episode or okay. listened to it, whatever. Yeah. Um, but yes, so Blood Reaver is the second book in the Night Lords trilogy. The there's really no name for it. I guess you could say the the first claw trilogy or whatever, just the story mm, of Talos, yeah. whatever. Um is the second book. It is my personal favorite of the three. Yeah. It's uh, it's wild. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty crazy. Um so I guess in a sense we can kind of well, I always wonder how to talk about these books because I mean, initial thoughts pretty good i would assume oh yeah definitely um so far i there's been nothing about the night lords trilogy that's really disappointed me um, okay 
yeah, I I'm I'm pretty all in on on the trilogy and on the Night Lords and on Talos and uh, the only thing that surprises me so far is that Uzas hasn't been just skinned alive by his brothers yet because man acts a fool. Uh <laughs> man, man acts a fool indeed. Um, we'll talk definitely more about that. But I, I think I probably I don't know that the better way to do it, but I think the best way to do it is probably just to go through the book like talk about things we like probably in chronological order because yeah. there's a lot of really big things that happen at the end of the book that so many big things Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot so if we remember the ending of the prior book is when the covenant of blood was taking survivors from the ooh, what was the other night lord ship called um, not the Echo of Damnation, that comes later. Yeah, that comes later. Oh, you're... Uh, it, it was something, I forget the name, Wasn't but... was it like the Hunter's Premonition? Hunter's Premonition, yes! Hey, yes, nice. Good job. I don't know how I pulled that out, by the way. I don't... I don't know why that was stored in my head, but good, 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 yep. They were, they were grabbing survivors that were being shot down by the Black Fleet, and they were bailing from Crythe. Yep. And the, we've they come did a back. Hardcore bail too. The way they bailed out of that planet, whew. It, it's pretty cool. The concept that the, the exalted took the ship into like low orbit while it's just a flame, and it's like, get in, get in now. I'm not <laughs> slowing down. <laughs> I was just, I still remember the biggest surprise was that the exalted actually like came around. It was like, you know what? I think I should probably listen to Talos. We'll go, we'll help Talos. And I was like, whoa, hey, the exalted's like on your side. Oh. So crazy too, considering that the he was getting like railed by the hunter's premonition captain. Yeah, he was like Vanger, you were always a worm, and he just cuts the link. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's uh, Blood Reaver starts off about two to three months post mm -hmm. on the raid. Uh, well, so they raided a planet, and they were going for something called Ganges, yep. the Ganges, Ganges. Station. Mm-hmm. And the Ganges Station was the the major was the major prize. Yep. Uh, yep. And it starts off. I'm not. I'm. I'm not. I think. Oh, it starts off with um with them getting a, a marine, a, a space yeah. marine, a, a blood angel, right? Because they have. I think they have the blood angel like crucified on like their walls or something, and they're trying to get him to like. Are they trying to get him to talk? It, it was. It was him or. It might have been the. Mar no, it wasn't the Marines, Aaron. That was the later one. Yeah, um, it was the, some the, chapter. Yeah, I I could have sworn it was one of the blood angels that was left over from when they failed to uh, take over the Covenant of Blood, and uh, you, uh, the, sem semantics. <laughs> the other thing about uh, these books is it uh, being a space marine and having all that like stuff that helps keep you alive is kind of a double edged sword. Because uh, when you get captured by like the Night Lords and they like you know, cut you in half or, like, open you up and just let your entrails spill out, your body is still, like, doing its supernatural healing and kind of sort of slowing down your death and making it all the more gruesome and painful because, like, it's still trying to, like, coagulate your blood and heal the wound and everything is... It's just... Oh, God. The 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 Marines are like the image of, of Pepe with, like, the spaghetti coming out of his pocket, but it's, like, trying to put the intestines back in their body. Yeah. Yep. Oh. It's really it's really nasty. But the, the opening of Blood Reaver, I think, is one of my more favorite parts of the whole book because it does a couple things. One, uh, it introduces us to a new character, a gentleman named Maruk. Maruk, yes. I, I think his op intro is my favorite part of the entire <laughs> book when he's in his tiny little closet room <laughs> and he's trying to watch TV mm -hmm. and his feet hurt and his ears are ringing and he can't just put the batteries back in the remote. Yep, yep. And he's like, balls to this. And he throws the remote and just goes to bed. <laughs> One of the best parts about that was, um, I forget what his specific job was, but it was such a menial bullshit job that the book is literally like yeah we couldn't even be bothered to program a servitor to do what you do and it's like oh it's like 16 hour shifts and just another seven more years and i'll finally be able to leave yeah. and it's <laughs> like oh my god years. life in the imperium <laughs> yeah and even when he turns on the tv the things he has are like safety drills uh ecclesiarchy sermons and safety drills or something and it's like oh no and he's like ah it's better than silence so whatever sure there's an old 
old Family Guy uh, meme I remember where it was like Quagmire and Cleveland are chained in a basement by Stewie, and he oh. puts on like the DVD instructional video, oh. and he just la leaves it on repeat, and later on they're just repeating every word because they memorized it. <laughs> That's kind of how I imagine it to be. Probably, yeah. Um, but... And then it, you get into this big thing where the Night Lords are obviously going for a raid on Ganges, and so they do something called the Screech, which is oh, basically yeah. turns off most to all communication, even lighting, mm -hmm. back on through the station, and also just puts out a high-pitched, like, human scream, like a chorus of yelling, yep. blaring through the loudspeakers across the entire station, because... <laughs> Local best boy Septimus <laughs> yeah. was a fucking undercover, like double agent mm -hmm. in the station the whole time mm -hmm. for two the months. Whole time, whole time. Uh, I also love that when they were doing the screech, just as it started, Maruk was just about to fall asleep, finally get some rest, and then bah! Poor Maruk. <laughs> Poor Maruk. Maruk has a bad time. Yeah, and then the Covenant of Blood is doing a... What is it? It's a, It's not a slow burn, but they've just been drifting on, like, no power into Ganji, so they wouldn't be detected, I think, right? Yeah, because uh, they basically do a very slow, like, go to the edge of the system, do a little bit of propulsion, but then, like, you know, because it's space. There's no thing. There's nothing to stop you, so they're oh, slowly yeah, sure. drifting. Yeah, yeah. Um, And so, yeah, then they were able to... Obviously, take the station. Took all the slaves. We now have our our new our new human character, Maruk, which yeah. is arguably one of the better, one of my more favorite parts of this book. Mm -hmm. He's he's kind of your you know, Space Marine books are always the best when there's a, a human character that that centers around it because it shows the the disconnect between the two yeah. of them. Yeah. Um, Septimus is great, but he is kind of already lost. Oh, definitely. He's already given in to heresy. Like, yeah, he's, and then he's like, yeah, Octavia is kind of a posh noble mm -hmm. and, and a navigator. So Maruk is just this old man manufacturer, <laughs> and he's like walking around this, the, the the covenant like, what the hell is going on? Yep. Also, when, when uh, the Night Lords first got to Ganji Station and they turned off all the heating, oh, like you... You really get an idea of how savage the fucking Night Lords are. As, like, uh, Maruk and, like, the little group that he's leading are trying to, like, make their way into the storerooms to get some food. And it's just, like, wall-to-wall -wall bodies that have been frozen to the floor. And it's just oh, like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He was talking about how he would constantly piss himself because it was the, to keep himself warm. Yeah. He was, like, there was another guy that, like, pissed himself out of fear. And Maruk was like, well, at least when I did it, it was just to keep warm. Yeah, I was like, yeah, stupid man. Pussy. <laughs> I, I've noticed a really interesting thing that uh, uh, Aaron Dembski Bowden does when he writes. Mm -hmm. When he's writing about specific characters, his tone of writing tends to change. So, okay. for, for example, if he's talking about Talos or something, right? Mm -hmm. There's kind of this very grim, dour way he does the writing for it. But right. then when you go to, like, Maruk, for instance, when he's writing about uh, things in Maruk's perspective, mm -hmm. he'll use slang like piss and shit, like the floor was covered in piss. Where oh, if, if yeah, he was, yeah, like, yeah, probably yeah. talking about Talos, he'd probably say, like, urine and fecal matter. That's His true. language is kind of different when he talks with different characters. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, and it's a good way to keep everything nice and immersive, too. Um, cause if you're from Talos's perspective, he, he really shouldn't be using slang. And if you're Maruk, you absolutely should be using slang. So that's, well, a, that's, yeah. a, that's a plus that I wasn't really thinking about. Yeah. T Talos's slang would be like Nostroman slang, which is yep. there's plenty of that, but, um, <laughs> plenty, but the, the main deal after the Ganges raid kind of goes with the, there's a little bit of, of interesting lore on the covenant. Um, mm -hmm. the, the void, Voidborn. The young child got sawed in half yeah. uh, at the end of Soul Hunter. And so the father, Akir, I think was his name? Something like um, that, yeah. He, he's understandably very upset. Mm -hmm. uh, and and she also had the, the coin, which means yeah. protection. And that didn't work. Yeah, wasn't that the big reason that Akir was, like, really mad? Was because, like, hey, you, you gave my daughter, the Voidborn, the coin. You were supposed to protect her. You didn't. What the fuck? This is bullshit. And my wife is dead. Yes, that's right. She also died. 
it kind of gives you a little bit of an interesting perspective. Because if you look at the Imperium perspective, like, the Blight Angels will gladly tear through civilians <laughs> because yeah. they're heretics. Oh, yeah. They're on a heretic you know? ship. They're on a chaos ship. They're absolutely like, uh, criminals in the eyes of the Imperium. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, oh, look, little children, little heretics, you mean? The like, flamer. <laughs> little demons. <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting because if you were to ever have a book from the Imperium perspective, you probably, they probably would just do that. And not really care. Yeah. And then you look at it this way, and you're like, oh, that's rough. Yeah, that's fucked up. It's but, like, um, wow, the Imperium's really evil. And the Imperium's like, no, we're great. There's a lot of uh, a lot of back and forth going on with the crew in that way. Septimus is trying to kind of calm everyone down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and Akira is obviously rather rather upset and angry, but mm -hmm. and he dies pretty quick. Oh yeah, he does. He, he not does, by doesn't he. Not by Talos. We we technically don't know who. Yeah, we don't but... know, but it is heavily implied that we know who did it. Fucking fucking Uzas. Fucking Uzas. Because uh, Uzas goes on a bit of a, a chaos -y rampage where like he thinks he's in... What is he? Yeah. Thinks he's ripping the, he thinks he's killing um, like guardsmen, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. generals and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was going to say he thinks he's killing like Imperium and he thinks he's in like a church or something. Right. And he's like, oh, my God, I have to yeah. rip them apart and eat them. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then he like snaps out of it and he's like, uh, oh, I'm yeah, in the covenant of blood. Oh, no, <laughs> I it did it again. It's actually really interesting because it shows that he is legitimately hallucinating. Yeah. Because Korn has, because he, he constantly makes this idea that he prays and stuff to Korn for their power, but he hates them. Yeah. Um, which I bet is what it started off as. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it kind of wormed his way into him. Oh, yeah. But Definitely. it was interesting to see him have this, like, he hallucinated himself having this gloriful, like this glorified, this I, I'm a, I'm a hero. Look yeah. as I as I kill the enemies of of man. When in reality he's just slaughtering people and yeah. killed I think two night lords. Yeah, he does. He does Some kill third a couple claw. Of night lords. He kills. Um, it was funny because like when they when they finally catch Uzas and I think they they either what do they chain him to the wall or like pin him to the wall or something. They chain him to the uh, like the operating slab in the apothecarium. Right. Um, they said um, <laughs> they said the night lord that he killed, and it was like the leader of like third claw or something. And his name was um, oh, what was it? It was like Tor oh, uh, Del Caris. Del Car No, that's the one that takes over, right? The one oh, he kills. oh yes, that's the one that takes over. Sorry, yeah. um, I don't remember the one he killed, but he was also corrupted yeah. by Corrin. But it was like his name was like Tor Zarl, and I was like, whoa, what did he? What no? He there's no way Uzas killed Zarl. And then I had to like listen to it again. I was like, oh no, his name that Tor is his first name. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, Tor Zal. I think yeah. it's Zal. Yeah. When I first I was like, wait, did he? T do you, did he say he just tore up Zaro? What? Man, man, no, no one, fucking no one can, way. No one can tear up Zaro. He's I too was good. Like, I was like, damn, this fool must have been completely possessed by corn if he did that. But then I, I listened to it again. I was like, oh, that's his. N oh, okay. And then Zaro showed up. I was like, oh, this makes sense now. Okay, cool. That that led to a a rather unfortunate altercation with Third Claw. It was yeah. actually interesting because the Del Caris guy cheated in like a duel. Yeah. To gain, to gain the ability to lead Third Claw, yeah. and he was trying to stop them from fighting First Claw. Yeah, and it, he, and it didn't work. Yeah, he didn't want that, and he got into a duel. And when they were supposed to not use guns, he was like, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna bolter this fool." Uh, no, he shot with a plasma pistol. <laughs> oh, that's right, it was a plasma pistol. You're right, you're right. I knew he used a gun. I thought it was a bolter. I guess that'd be a little extreme inside the. Uh... He <laughs> bolt or the hulls of the ship. And, well, that probably wouldn't be great. Oh, oh no! The, uh, the plasma pistol is actually far worse. That would blow a hole in the ship. Oh, the oh. plasma pistol. Oh, it, so turned, it turned. It okay. turned into. It turned him to ash. Like it, it. Like it turned his armor into ash. There was no oh. salvage. Oh, I forgot that. I I didn't remember that. Holy shit! The bolter is like getting shot by a fully automatic small grenade launcher. 
Right. So it hurts, but it's like little explosions. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to, yeah, the, the plasma pistol is like fires the heat of the sun. It's fucking nuts. Damn, um, so that is significantly worse than shooting a Boltor in the ship. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, Ooh. it's far worse, but he, you know, he was doing yeah. his thing. Yeah, um, and that's right. He he wanted to completely be like, no, 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 no. We really don't want to fight First Claw. This is let's just forget it. Whatever. I'm the leader now. You got to follow me. Don't do it. And they're like, nah, don't be a the, bitch. And then they do, and then they have their classic First Claw. We have come for you line. Hey, yep. They I do. like uh, I like some of the little voxing between Talos and Delcaris when mm -hmm. they when he's saying like, yeah, we have seven. You have four. And he's like five if I unchained Uzas. Yep. Like, that's still less than seven. He's like, yeah, but I have Zarl. And he's like, that's a good point. That's right. He's <laughs> shit. Zarl. Fucking God. And it actually, he, he does unchain Uzas. And Uzas does fight alongside them. Which is... Yeah, they, they kill all of them. And then yeah. they, and then Delcaris tries to join First Claw. Which, I was actually kind of sad that Talos said no. Yeah, I was kind of hoping he'd be like, well, you did put up a good fight, and, you know, all that. And then when he killed him, I was just like, oh. Yeah. Was, it, it makes... was starting to grow on me. I was like, oh, come on. It, it made, it, I liked, it was like both sides of things, where I liked, he was growing on me too, but at the same time, I need to remember that Talos isn't, like, he shows a lot more restraint than most Night Lords, but he's still not, a, like... Yeah. A very nice guy. Yeah, he's still pretty evil. Um, he's still pretty evil. Yeah. That battle fucked them up, though. Oh yes, it did. Uh, cause I mean, like they had they had repaired their armor somewhat after the the Blood Angels invasion, and then after they were you know after they killed off all of Third Claw, they were all fucked up again. And like Talos' helmet was like battered, his armor was fucked, and yeah, that was that was uh, uh that yeah that fucked them up. I think that's a good way to describe it. Sure. I, I mean, they had to wade through bolter shells. That was their thing. Oh yeah. And, and it was just why they were all messed up. And Talos's entire face was just blood and scars. Oh, that's he, right. He looked yep. awful. Um, mm -hmm. and then then he went to uh oh, and then we get introduced. Oh, well, there's two characters we got introduced to. One I forgot. I can't believe I forgot it. We got introduced to our man Hound. Oh, of course, Hound, Mistress, Hound. Mistress. A, a creepy, like, elderly, five or four foot six, five foot zero, yeah. little man with his eyes sewn shut and a little sawed off shotgun. Yeah, he's, when they first described him, I was like, oh, God, all I could think of was like a creepier version of like uh, Igor. Uh, with Frankenstein. That's a very good comparison, yes. Yeah. It's just, it's just, oh, he's so creepy. And like, that, you know, you know what I, I picture him as? Like, that's like the personification of when someone calls you a simp. That ah. Right? Mistress. 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 Will feet. Show feet. Mistress. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hound totally has a foot fetish. You know he does. I like I I really enjoy just some of the small parts mm -hmm. where it's um it's like uh yes mistress follow mistress <laughs> and it's like shut up yes mistress no talking anymore mistress <laughs> quiet time mistress it's like oh no he doesn't get it um it's kind of weird though he sounds more decrepit in the beginning of the book he oh, acts yeah. more normal later on yeah um I don't know that's just maybe he got used to her or whatever but. Mm -hmm. um, it's weird because his eyes are completely sewn shut. Yeah, it's so strange. And he can, and he still like can see. Maybe it's like you know his other senses have picked up so much because he doesn't have his eyesight anymore that like you know he can hear stuff, he can smell stuff, and I don't know. It's a creepy little little shit. Yeah. But at the same time, he's very lovable. He's a surprisingly large amount of comic relief. Yeah. I, I, there's a part later on where Octavia rolls like a coin across the room and Hound just like runs at it like a little dog and he's like, ooh, coin, here you go. He's like, yeah, he's fetching, she's fetching with uh, with Hound. But yeah, at the start of the book, he's like, it's like, oh God, Hound is creepy. And I'm kind of like, I'm with Octavia. It's like, oh God, Hound, shut the fuck up, go away. But by the end of the book, it's like, oh, yeah, I, I kind of like Hound. He's, he's, he's yeah, well, strangely lovable. 
<laughs> we'll get to we'll get to that yeah, no we'll doubt we'll get to that for sure yeah um but we also after the battle with uh third claw we get introduced to lecorifice of the bleeding eyes ah the um, raptors the raptor i, I think lecorifice really comes into his own in the third book mm -hmm. um there's a lot more there's a lot of him but he's got this like he's got this weird thing where so okay raptors back in the day are a little different than raptors now. Okay. So there's a unit called a raptor you can take in game, but raptors now are more like regular chaos space marines that just happen to have jetpacks. Right. Um, there's also a unit called a warp talon, which is like a demonic version of a raptor. Ooh. The Corophis <laughs> is kind of in, is like in the middle. Oh. He's got the, like the taint has kind of hit him. That's why he's all weird. Yeah. Uh, but he's not quite like a demon. Right. So okay. he like strides around on all fours, you know. Yeah, he, yes, he he does. he talks in this very <laughs> like like kind of condory like his neck cracks and twitches mm -hmm. and stuff. He has like a bird look. He's kind of a dick. It's kind yeah, of fun. Yeah, he is kind of a dick. That he talked to sure. that one com officer and he's like, "Hello, human. I am Lucorifus. <laughs> what is your name?" And the guy's like, "Oh my god. Oh, this is this is awful." Get away uh, I, from me. I love the way the other raptors talk with that. Like, yes, yes. We'll obey. Yes, yes. yes. Must feed. Yes. yes, yes Time yes. to hunt. Yes, Soar. Yes. Yeah, they're, the, the raptors are dope. Uh, especially when you actually get to see them in combat. And, oof, boy, raptors are savage. Yeah, they're, they're, they eat people a lot. <laughs> yeah, they do. Um, there's that one moment towards the end of the book where, like, Lucorifus is lunging at the guy he's fighting, and he's just like, I will eat your eyes! And it's like, whoa! <laughs> yeah. Dial it yeah, back fuck. just a notch, dude. <laughs> Dial the, the Night Lords back? No, sir. Yeah, he, you got pumped that up to 30. Jesus. Um, I, I like Lucorifus. Um, he's an interesting character. A little, mm -hmm. He's creepy, but I like how his little pack of the bleeding eyes, there's like 30 of them or whatever, mm -hmm. and they're just all kind of there, like, <laughs> like <laughs> they just kind of like giggle and snicker and like and, and have like weird condor like <laughs> noises. Yep. Lots of like <laughs> kind of sounds with like whirring joints. They're really feral. It's cool. Oh, yeah. They're definitely like a feral sort of hunting pack for sure. Birds of prey, if you will. There's actually a, a great moment after the the fight where where Talos is kind of succumbing to his wounds in the corridor, mm -hmm. um, after leaving with a meeting with the Exalted about like, hey, we're gonna let's let's fix let's fix our ranks. Exalted's like, I want to fucking fight more, you know? Yeah. Um, and when he's leaving, it's kind of interesting because he's he's on the comm on the Vox and he's trying to get people's help because he's he's basically dying in the corridor. Yeah. And he's like, hey, Syrian, Mercutian. And Anybody. I really like I really like the small moment that they had in the writing where he, it said Talos did uh, something that completely surprised him. And he asked for Zarl. And I was like, these guys were friends growing up, yeah. quote unquote. And, wow. and, he, and he just doesn't want to even vox him. Like, he refuses. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, they were as close as you could be friends on, uh, on Stromo. Stromo. Then, is this the book where they talk about uh, um, his mom? His mom. It is. Oh, boy, that's a big depressi. Yes, that's Ooh. that's the depre depresso espresso. But yeah. you know, you know who finds him in that hallway was Uzas. Yeah, good old Uzas finds him. Mm -hmm. Th that was that was a good part because Uzas was like had was clear. Yeah, he has a few of those moments in this book where he finds moments of clarity. And Talos is, like, shocked, but he's like, man, I miss that. Yeah, it's actually quite sad, because mm -hmm. he'll, he'll say something really profound, and they're like, wait, who's that? What'd you say? And he's like, what? <laughs> blood for blood? Yeah, oh. it's it's kind of weird. U Uzos had as many moments of clarity as he did moments of savagery in this book. Yeah, he does, actually. You're right. They even had a flashback. Uh, during the Battle oh, of Terra, yeah, when when Uzas was the sergeant of a yeah. squad with a bolter Malkari and himself gave to him as a gift, yeah. and he's like a like a, he's like a hero, which it's yeah, really it's, sad. Yeah, it's 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 kind of sad to see what Chaos is, has uh, dwindled Uzas down to just a 
just a sort of bloodthirsty savage when he used to be like you know this really oh i mean as noble as night lords can get but this yeah this strong warrior yeah Instead there's a of lot just of sort that. of the punching bag for everyone when he gets out of the line and there's a lot of that that good backstory which is why i like this one so much like um like you learn more about mercutian you know you learn he was kind of a rich boy like a yeah. like a gang leader's son basically mm -hmm. And Zaro keeps on giving him shit for it. <laughs> As he should. As should he? he? Should. Well, Is sure, Zaro much not? better? I mean, on Nostromo, as far as they're concerned, as far as Night Lords are concerned, well, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe we, not. We, do get a, we do get that, that backstory of uh, Talos and Zaro as kids, though. <sighs> Boy, that's so fucked up. <laughs> that that was uh that was rough. That's uh, so rough when they're when they're uh what they're walking by a woman that's getting <clears throat> abused. Y y yep, those we'll words. Just, yeah, we'll just say abused. It's worse than that, but we'll just say she's being abused and uh Talos is just watching it happen and uh Sarl is just like, "Hey, hey, hey, hey. You can't you can't you can't watch that. Just keep moving along. What are you doing? It's not like you're going to save her." You, 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 you. It's not even that they're gonna they, they can try to help. It's it's literally like don't watch. They'll see your face and then they'll kill you. Yeah. Um it's self preservation instead of any form of, of good. Yeah. And then oh god, and then when they get like to Talos' house. His mom has, is tattooed <laughs> up with uh yep. her, her owners. Yep. She it's, her it's, sleeve it's... is rolled up with a tattoo and they're like, Oh yeah, that's that's her slave owner. It's like oh, and he's oh like, oh, God. you'll, you got to answer your questions so that maybe the Legion will take you because you're a smart boy. Yeah. And it's, it would, oh. I think Talos had a, had a quote in this one where Octavia asked him why he became a space Marine. He's like, I wanted to be a hero. Look how that turned out. Oh, yeah. Talos's backstory is really sad. Uh, his mom's a, isn't his mom a slave prostitute? She's she's a, a gang whore is what he says. Oh, that's right. Does it, oh. <laughs> there, there were, dude, there was a there's a part when it's like yeah she she was thirty and she looked sixty because she yep. was a, a a gang's whore and oh. he said she, uh, he thought she was diseased and when he said that the first time I read the book I was like oh she had cancer oh. <laughs> like no <laughs> she had AIDS she had. She probably had everything. Had a lot of things. She had lots of STDs. Like, like oh, that's what you mean. Nostroman gang whore. She unfortunately probably had everything you could get. Which is yeah, sad. Yeah, it was. That's sad. really sad. And then, and then you look back at the first book when you realize she got shot by a guard when she was trying to see him when there oh, he was a marine. Remember. That's Right, and he, and that's right, because doesn't isn't Zara like, hey, uh, how you doing? And Talos is like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, uh, you know, that uh, that that woman hey. that got shot hey. right in front of you, don't you remember? And he's like, who the fuck was that? And he's like, really, Talos, really? He's like, yeah, who the fuck was that? I don't know who that was. He's like, it's your fucking mom. And he's like, oh, was oh. it really? Hmm. Oh well. it, it's it's a great way to show the dehumanizing of the Marines as they oh, yeah. like how far they are from humanity and from emotions and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, there yeah, it, it's really it, it's really interesting and quite quite sad. Oh, that, the whole part yeah. that whole part with the fucking with his mom was really sad. Oh god, yeah. It, it, hit, it hit a lot harder the second read, I gotta be honest. Yeah, it's it's whew. Just thinking about it, it's just like, oh god, like Jesus, Nostromo, Night Lords, Space Marines, all that is just so sad. Like God. But they um uh, past that, they're they the main goal, the main part of the book is basically their ship is mega fucked <laughs> yeah. because for all the reasons it already was, and Octavia is apparently not a good sailor. No, she's and not. That's right. She's she's flying the ship apart. But they need to dock at Hell's Iris. Oh, uh, yes. The the uh, religion the region of the Red Corsairs. Mm -hmm. Formerly um, the Astral Claw, right? Indeed, they were part of the Badab War, which was also part of the Lamenters. We talked about mm -hmm. that a bit ago. The Astral Claw were the Lamenters' only friends. Then they went to chaos, and then nobody trusted the Lamenters. 
and you get your good leader man Huron Blackheart. Blackheart. <laughs> what a and and they are full pirates. This is full a pirate on. faction. <laughs> With his fucking monkey. <laughs> With his weird psychic monkey, his port city. Yeah. Um, and one of my favorite another one of my favorite jokes in the whole book when Septimus and Marook are at a bar and Marook is seeing a, a hot piece of ass across oh. the way. <laughs> and he's like, Hey, come over here and she she walks up to him and says some weird shit in a different language with a weird snake tongue. Yep. And Septimus points at his pistol and he's like, fuck off or whatever. <laughs> and, and he's like, I thought, damn, what the hell, Septimus? I, I thought she wanted to bang. And she, he's like, she did. Look at her dress, though. It's <laughs> it's not leather. It's she would have skinned skin. you afterwards. Yeah. And then he says the best thing in the whole book, which is like, I want to leave. <laughs> Right. I want to live and who can blame him? It's like, I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah, this place is not good. Um, oh, yeah. I, I just, I really like that. It's such a genuine, it's like an event horizon when they watch the video of all the, all the people like going mad and then Lawrence Fishburne. Oh, yeah. Wait, is Lawrence Fishburne? Um, is, I think he is in that, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's Lawrence Fishburne. Um, yeah, yeah. He's just like, we're leaving. It's such a good response. <laughs> Rook's like, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's... Uh, it's so boy. funny. You know, but, uh, yeah, the Red Corsair kind of kind of fucked. We, uh, we get introduced to what might be my favorite character in, in the first claw, which is Varial. Varial, yep. Varial, the flare. The sort of... I mean, I guess he's a doctor. He's a he, He's an apothecary. Healer. Oh, that's right, that's right. And, like, the first interaction we get with him is, like, he he could have saved a red Corsair, but he was like, ah, fuck him. I got other things to do. This would take too much time. And yeah, but, but then he... nobody lets him forget it. But, but then he skinned his face and put it on his pauldron. Oh, God, <laughs> I don't know how that, I don't you remember that the day, like, We're here for Callus or whatever. It's like, oh, there he is. And he points to his shoulder. Oh, I don't know how I forgot that. Hey, he oh, skits the man. Oh, God. <laughs> and I mean, well, I mean, that's, I guess that's, that's fitting. Um, and there's so many times where people are like, you know, you could have saved him, right? And he's like, yeah, so? But I didn't. He's like, yeah, whatever. So? Let's move on. Don't don't worry about it. It's like, oh, okay. He's okay, such a sure. he, he's such like he he has he's basically Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, you know he basically is. Like he even talks in that sort of like really hoity-toity refined way too. Yeah, he he well he doesn't blink ever, pretty much. <laughs> what a creeper. He he barely ever blinks. And not only does he barely ever blink, but he talks and he, he kind of, he never laughs, really. It's true, he doesn't. That's, I and, guess he never does, does he? You're right. Well, he does once, but he, he never smiles either. What a fucking creeper. Yeah, he's, he's incredibly weird. Jesus. Fits right in with First Claw. <laughs> <laughs> Fits, Fits right in with First Claw. Fits right in with First Claw, yeah. Um, is this around the time where they, so when did they realize that the, um, that the Red Corsair had the Echo of Damnation? Because I'm kind of forgetting when exactly they were like, okay, the Red Corsair had the Echo of Damnation, and, uh, I hate to break it to you guys, but we need to take that thing back. Uh, yeah, it's when they scanned the Venomous Birthright. And they were like, oh, this is actually the Echo of Damnation. Okay. And so so the, the goal is work with the Red Corsairs and Huron Blackheart mm -hmm. to get the Gene Seed Vaults on Villamus, yeah. which was a fortress monastery for the Marines Errant, I believe. Yeah, Marines Errant, um, for sure. And so Night Lords were being used. In a weird way, Huron was actually quite a convincing uh, guy. He was rather, like... He's scary, but he's very, um, I don't know. He understands morale. He's better at convincing people than fucking Abaddon was. Oh, that's not exactly saying much. <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> Abaddon uh, is just pure fear, right? Like, if you don't obey me, I'm just gonna... You're dead. 
Yeah, I'm sure he's got some charisma, but he didn't great. But yeah. he um that was the whole idea. And the Night Lord's job was to destabilize the the core and cause problems for the main Red Corsair strike group. Yeah. Um and during this time, they also find out that good old Huron has an old friend of theirs. Oh right, he does. Um Ruven and Ruven <laughs> has been has been like gouged and and yeah. blinded and yep. can't do any psychic powers and been tortured for like months. Yeah, that's right. They have like a do, do they have like a spotlight on him or is it just natural light that's on him and it's just he's like ah, I can't see this fucking light. It's just the entire the entire room is like pure white. Yeah. Yeah, so it burns that out, and he also has like an anti anti psychic power collar, and he's yeah. been chained up, and he's been barely kept alive with like glasses of water. Yeah, he's oh boy, and he deserves it. Fuck him, right? <laughs> Fuck Reuven. He's a he's a he's a bitch traitor. Fuck him. Reuven. Well, he's he's been traitor twice, but yeah, twice. <laughs> That's right. He 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 was traitor to the Night Lords, and then he betrayed. Well, did he betray Abaddon? Or did Abaddon just be like, "Ah, you're useless"? Dink. Uh, he uh, Abaddon was like, "You're useless." Dink. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's interesting because they the big plan, right? The big plan because they wanted the Echo of Damnation back. Yeah, yeah. Was do the thing on Villamus, leave, take over the Echo with Variel. Yep. And then jump both the ships using yeah. Octavia on the Echo on the Echo and Variel on the Covenant. Not Variel, sorry, uh Reuven, Reuven on the Covenant. Yeah. And so they had to part with Reuven or to get Reuven for that. Yep. Um Yeah, they though, they bargained to get Reuven, right? They did what did they give? They gave him something. I don't quite remember what it was, but they gave yeah. him something important. Yeah. To get um, Reuven out of the uh their imprisonment. Yeah. I, I will admit as much as Reuven's a shithead, <laughs> I, I will say that his reasoning for betraying is pretty understandable. Remind he, me he again. Has this, he has this, like, I was sick and tired of being a stagnant legion uh, in a stagnant world. I oh. wanted to win the fucking war, and the Night Lords weren't doing it. Abaddon is. Right. That's, that's right. Okay. I remember it, that it's, reasoning now. It's basically the reasoning of a lot of Black Legion people. Yeah. Cause... And so it's it's nice to have that because, in a sense, I kind of think he's right. I Yeah. At least Abaddon is trying to win the war. At least he's making Black Crusades. At least he's trying to kill uh, the Imperium, whereas, like, the Night Lords are kind of just happy uh, sticking in the shadows hitting and running every so often, uh, but they're not really thinking about actually conquering anything. They're not really actually thinking about toppling the Imperium, whereas at least Abaddon, he he's doing stuff. You know, He is doing stuff. Uh, Talos has these, like, quote-unquote delusions of grandeur for it, but he can't really act on it because he's just a guy. Yeah. As opposed to, say, the Exalted or whoever. Yeah. Uh, but the Exalted even wanted to start doing better. He even was like, "We, we I want to go back to the glory days." Yeah. Yeah. Um. But the uh the whole battle on Villamus was very very fun. Oh um, god. There's <laughs> lots of good lots of good murder, <laughs> lots of good flaying. I has another great moment with the Terminators. Yep. I uh, the well, before we get to that, the moment I remember is like uh, they they go through um, one of the people that's working in like I don't know if it's the library or something, and they're talking about how yeah. I was like, oh I wanted to be a space marine, but oh, I just couldn't hack it on the physical test, so now I'm serving here, and that should be good enough. And I've been working with this elderly dude, uh, and then <laughs> he goes to check on the elderly dude, and he finds his corpse with the eyeballs down its throat, Talos fucking grabs him and just rips him apart and tells him not to scream. And it's like, oh, oh it's, it's, yeah, he's got doing little sneaky Batman shit, yep. basically. And during this whole time, Lucorifus and his boys are like ripping apart generators and mm -hmm. all of his rap his Raptor friends are like, ah, it's no, no, pray Raptor. No, yes, yes. I kill people. Why, why do this? It's like, kill the jet. Just get rid of the generators. It's fine. Just, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. 
Um, it's got a great moment when Huron teleports in with a bunch of Terminators, and on the end of the corridor, they see a bunch of Marines errant setting up positions. Mm -hmm. And Mercutian says something in Nostromo that equivalates to, oh shit. <laughs> And they just start getting hailed on by bolter fire. And I, I really like, I really, really like when all of the Night Lords are hiding behind the Terminators. Oh, that's right. They and are. And then it's like, fight and you fucking Night Lord <laughs> bastards. And, and they're, they're all giggling. <laughs> they're all just giggling like children behind them. Yeah, like, come on, fight. What are you doing? And they're just cackling back there and not returning fire. And yeah. It's it's really it's really good. That that ah, whole thing fine. is fun. They're, termina they're terminators. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's is a very very fun time. I I find it incredibly <laughs> endearing. But um, post that is when they get all of the they they do all their their big betrayal, um, mm -hmm. which is a pretty crazy finale. You you oh, yeah. you started off with Hound Maruk. Oh well, no! Wait, I'm gonna back this up a little bit. Okay. Um. There's the part where Reuven confronts Septimus, and oh right, that's a really interesting scene. Yeah, because uh, he's go because he goes in there, and he's basically like, "What's up, slaves? Sure sucks <laughs> being a slave, doesn't it? Pretty cringe." <laughs> and he's like, "By the way, I killed the second slave. Tee hee ha ha. Fuck you." That's right. We finally get to find out what happened to the Secundus. Yeah, Reuben just killed his ass. Talos doesn't want to talk about it. But yeah, Reuben fucking killed him. And doesn't Reuben also say that, like, because uh, Septimus doesn't believe him. He's like, what? You're so full of shit. If you did that, Talos would have fucked you two ways from Sunday. And Reuben was like, he tried, but he's a bitch. And I stopped him. And it's like, oh, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Um, and then it was something like Talos promised to, like, get him, get revenge on him for killing the Secundus, right? Yeah, which, but of course, then Reuven left the, the Legion, so at that point it was whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, it, it was quite endearing to see the Septimus have two pistols, Maruk with a las gun, Hound with a double-barreled shotgun, and Octavia with an eye all be like, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> Octavia just with an eye. Yep. Just with the eyes, like get, yep. get it. It's like mistress told you to leave. <laughs> oh, hound. Maruk has a, has a really good like the lady asked you to leave. Mm -hmm. Got that deep old British accent. I I, I like Ruva Reuven because he's he's standing there. And he's like I'm not angry. I'm just surprised. <laughs> yeah. Like all that like, this whole like none of this would even hurt me. Maybe mm -hmm. the eye would, but like none of this means anything. And but. Wow. <laughs> I actually kind of like that Reuben was there. Like, yes, he's a shithead. Yes, he's a traitor. Yes, you're obviously supposed to hate him. But it's it's kind of nice to have that sort of, like, villainous, sne sniveling, like, douchebag character to just sort of even everything. Because everybody's kind of, you know, getting along. Everybody's kind of happy. I mean, yeah, there's Uzas, but it's kind of nice to have Reuben there to really just be like, ooh. There's there's, a, it's great when you have someone you can really hate. Yeah, there's that slimy motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah, that that is always wonderful to have. Um, mm -hmm. but that that is a great moment because Maruk is talking to Septimus and Septimus is like, I never fucking did this before. Like, I was always just a nice slave. Yep. And he's like, you you got a you got a woman you wanna you like my my, my dude my son. <laughs> you gotta you got something to fight for now, and now you're realizing that this there's more to life. It's, now it's, you it's feel really, like a heretic. Yeah, it's really kind of cool. Yeah. It's uh it's quite it's quite nice. He also makes a good point. He's like, I'm gonna go after Octavia. He's like, you're telling me that she was taken by four criminals for four hours? Then she doesn't want you near her right now. <laughs> oh man. Um there was I don't remember exactly when it happened. Um, but as we were talking about Hound, there's a great it's a great hound moment. It was, um, I think they had picked up some people from Ganges Station, and they were acting uh, a fool. This is like right after uh, Septimus got the the Laz cannon that he gave to um, Maruk. Laz gun. Laz gun. A Laz right. cannon kills tanks. <laughs> 
Oh, a little, little bit of difference. Just Last a... cannon is the is the length of you head to toe. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, but um, yeah, there was a and and Septimus was gonna go take care of the problem causers, but Tal's was like, no, 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 this I got this, and um, they string <laughs> they string the guys up outside of uh, Octavia's door. And their guts are hanging out, and their intestines are hanging out. And Octavia looks at it, and she's like, oh. And Hound is confused by, like, she, like he thought she didn't know what it was. And he's like, oh, those are intestines. Oh, and great. She, and she's like, yeah, thanks. I, I got that. And he's like, don't eat them. <laughs> And, and he, then, he says with these sage uh, uh, the words sage, of experience. The like, sage-like wisdom of experience. <laughs> yes. And I was like, oh. That was so fun. <laughs> Thanks, Hound. Oh, God. <laughs> Hound has so many moments like that that are just like, oh, no. But it's he's, he's still such a likable, like, he's like a little puppy dog. Little he re it really is. Puppy dog. A little deformed thing. puppy dog. Yeah. yeah. Um, though... I mean, we're, we've been talking about this for quite a while at this point. We, uh, but, oh, I, but yeah. we got so much more. Uh, well, ah, fuck it, we'll keep going. Yeah, fuck um, it. But then they they do the big the big heist, basically. Mm -hmm. It's basically a heist. Oh yeah. Um, and this is one of the the parts I kind of I mentioned a couple times that I think Octavia isn't isn't written perfectly. Mm -hmm. Um, it could be a problem with the voice acting. Because the voice acting is incredible, but she's very breathy and a little whiny sounding. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's it. Could be different if I had a different voice in my head when I if I read it. Yeah, I I think his voice for Octavia isn't great. Yeah, it's a little it's a little weak compared to the rest. Of the yeah, cast. definitely. Um, however, Octavia uh, jumps. So they get to the Echo of a Damnation with a boarding palm with first claw. After Variel has spaced the remaining um, Red Crosshairs <laughs> yeah. in a and in, in a pretty hardcore little move, yeah, he does. Uh, uh. <laughs> and then they make their way to the navigation chamber. Uh, oh. Marook, Septimus, Hound, Octavia, and First Claw. Yeah, and they that... find Esmeralda. Oh boy, and and she, I guess she's she's in like a little. Navigator bathwater. Yo, oh god. Yeah, it's like a it's like a nutrient rich <laughs> bath to help with navigation. But she's yeah. been like, she can't the, get the out whole, of it though. The, the whole problem. ship is fucking like piratey. It smells like crap. Mm -hmm. It's covered in like actual waste. But she is is like decrepit yeah. and and slightly chaos tainted. Yep. Um. And and whatever whatever that navigator bathwater is like she she can't get out like she can't get out of it. So not only is it whatever nutrient rich whatever used to be in there, it's like sewage water at this point. Like it's got all of her like it's mostly piss and, and stuff, piss yeah, and shit in it. So it might have been nutrient rich at some point, but now it's basically just raw sewage. Yeah, and it's, it's gross. It, it sounds so disgusting. Like as soon as they enter the room, they're like overcome by it. Like even Hound looks disgusted, which is hmm. We're just saying something for a man who if he was telling the truth is over 10,000 years old. Yeah. The warp is fucky. Yeah. And naturally uh, Esmeralda's a little kooky. <laughs> yep. She's just a little kooky. It was interesting cuz I forgot about this. Nobody was looking at Esmeralda besides Octavia. Because they can't. Oh, that's the eye. true. The eye, that's right. They they would die. Which is why Talos was like, can we use her? Because he can't see her. Yeah. And once he, she said no, they all just bolted her to death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, there's no using her. That's for sure. You're not. Mm -mm. Um, um, I was I was worried that Octavia was going to have to get in that sludge and pilot from there. I was like, oh, man, you thought her piloting was bad before. <laughs> Yeah. He put her in that fucking sewage and she ain't gonna pilot you anywhere where you need to be. Which is actually interesting because she does pilot the ship to get away from the Red Corsair fleet, but she fucks up the mark. Yeah. And so the Covenant of Blood jumps in a in the correct area with Ruvim, mm -hmm. but they're gone. Yeah, um, they go way far off. I think she said it was because um the other navigator wasn't great to the ship. And the machine spirit wasn't a big fan, 
And now that, like, Octavia had control, it was like, it was like a wild stallion that just wanted to fucking run, and it was, like, super hard to control the ship. Yeah, it, this is one of the, the part of the reason why I think she isn't written great is because this is now twice in the same book a major plot point has occurred because of her uh, inexperience. Yeah. Like, yep. they, they shook the ship apart, they need to go to Hell's Iris, and now there's this thing. And, yeah. small spoiler, it happens again in the third book. Oh. So it's a little bit much. They they rely on Octavia's uh, lack of skill yeah, yeah. a lot, which... At the same time, like, she's a fucking slave. Her life sucks. I shouldn't be that mean to her, but I feel like it's almost a little bit of a crutch. Well, I mean, I it, it is a bit of a crutch, but in all fairness, she hasn't really been uh, a navigator for that long. Like, I mean, she was a navigator for that little whatever ship that she used sign. to be on. Yeah, but, like, this is the first time she's had, like, a full-blown uh, Astartes vessel to pilot. Right, so uh, I can still see her not being great. I don't know about three books worth, though. That sounds like a little much. Like maybe like the first time when she flies the ship apart and they have to go to Hell's Iris, and I could see being in a new ship how she's kind of like, oh shit, like this thing is wonky and weird, and I couldn't control it, and boop. Um, but yeah, third time, I don't know. Third time seems a little overkill. I'm okay with the the first two times because you know it's Octavia. She's not. She's not used to it yet. She's not used to all this uh, yeah. heresy. Yeah, that's that's true. But uh, with the travel, though, a couple things happened. One, there were some more Red Corsairs on the hull. <laughs> uh, they were trying most, to blast their way back in. Most of them, after they jumped into the warp, were just ripped into fucking pieces by psychic energy and the souls of the damned. Yeah, they're very um, descriptive about how that happens too. It's. Yeah, I guess that was Varial's idea, and, and even Talos was like, fuck, man. Yeah, when even when even the Night Lord's like, yo, dude, a little extreme. Uh. Um, but then there came this one guy. Yeah. Uh, one, one captain. Yeah, one survivor. Survivor who... Air quotes. <laughs> who it appears to... I'm not quite sure exactly, but... I believe he became something called a... Well, he was possessed by Nurgle, basically. Yeah, he was over, Nurgle, He was possessed by Chaos, yeah. Yeah, Nurgle basically possessed his bastard ass. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of that, he got a bunch of warp powers mm -hmm. and began to fuck up the ship and fuck up the bleeding eyes. Yeah, he started fucking up raptors. Yeah, and he started eating them. That's a very chaosy Nurgle thing to do, sure. It is a very chaosy thing. Um, actually, in case you're curious, this is a corn version, but this is kind of what a possessed looks like. Little uh Ooh, got like the big big claw, you know. That, that's sick. Yeah. I I think he's a possessed. I don't know if there's a different variant for what you would call him, but um he is actually a, a pretty nasty force. He yeah. makes his way into the ship. And Uzas is standing guard, and he just fucking one-taps him. Yeah, he one-shots Uzas, and he just knocks him out. I was like, oh, f fuck. Everybody inside that navigator's room is fucked. If he one-shot Uzas, I don't know what anybody else is going to do about him, because that's... Because <laughs> Zara left to go fight him. That's right, because, Be because the, the dude can like boxing that he was messing up the ship. And Zara, yeah. yeah. And he, like, kind of phased through walls a couple times because of his warp powers. Mm -hmm. And he got his way to the navigator room. Yeah. Um, which, I guess, we didn't mention earlier that Octavia accidentally killed somebody with her third eye. And that caused Uzas to kill, like, a demonic apparition of Delcaris. That's right. Um, oh, that's that right. was an it old was thing. Delcaris, no right. blood, no skull, no yeah. blood, no he skull. Was... He was not happy that he was forced to kill the aberration of Delcaris because there was no 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 blood for the blood god and no skulls for the skull throne. But another moment upset. of Uzas being like, yo, he helped. Yeah, that's true. He helped. Yeah. Um, but the They hold uh, that against Octavia for a while because she invited Chaos to sort of like follow them or something, right? Because when you kill with when you kill with the eye, the neverborn, which is just basically demons, kind of yeah. get like your scent. 
right, right. Um, but uh, yeah, so this giant Nurgle dude busts his way into the fucking room, <laughs> and then all you have is Maruk, Septimus, Hound, and Octavia, and they just start yeah. laying into him with las guns and stuff. But it's doing jack all. Yeah, as um, as as it should. Like, there's no reason. That they should really be able to do that much damage to, like, essentially a Chaos Space Marine. A, a possessed Chaos Space Marine with a, a cloud of flies so big it's taking shots. Yeah. Oh, um, which leads me to my least favorite part of this entire book. Mm -hmm. Where Maruk is fighting the possessed guy. He, he can't stand the horrible Nurgle smell. He throws up. Yep. And then he gra gets grabbed by the leg. Inhales a bunch of flies and gets flung into the wall so hard his head turns into mist. Oh, you and know, I... it's, it's interesting. We talked about this. Like, um, it wasn't until we talked about it that I, for some reason, I don't know if I just didn't register it. I didn't realize that Maruk died in this fight. I didn't know either. I was, I read Void Stalker and I was like, where's Maruk? And I looked up the wiki and it's like, he died. Yeah. Cause like, you, I, you told me that and I was like, wait. No, I I was expecting more Maruk and Void Stalker. I liked Maruk a lot, yeah. actually. And he just gets fucking slammed. A welcome to the jam, know. right? I, Space Jam, <laughs> Nurgle edition. Oh. It was really bizarre. And because I reread that part because I wanted to make sure it wasn't stupid. Mm -hmm. Or I wasn't stupid. And the, the words are almost specifically split his head open on the wall. Oh. But the word... The word uh, phrase split your head open is a common phrase for having a big gash yeah. in your head. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I guess he meant literally turned it into a, like a paste. Mm hmm. Yeah. And, and then and maybe, it was maybe so. Maybe that's what it was. I was thinking maybe there was just like a big gash that went down his head instead of just literal head eruption. Yeah. And it was also so incredibly like unceremonious. Yeah. And that's entirely because, well, right after that, he um, grabs grabs our good boy Hound, oh, lifts him up, Hound. and Hound with his with his just pure patience, <laughs> yeah. just waits, and then sticks his double barrel in the dude's f in mouth and just blows his like back of his head off. Yep, yep. And then he gets thrown at the wall with like the force of a baseball. Yep. And, and breaks every bone in his body. And poor Hound. Poor hound. And then doesn't uh, Uzas break in and and he uh, throws his chain axe at him. Yeah. And then and I think like, Zarl oh, arrives. Th and... Thank goodness. And then doesn't he like turn the chain saw axe on? Yeah, he starts like. It's like oh. I think Zarl arrives after that too to help. I don't remember, but I feel um... like by the time Zarl showed up, the uh, they had already killed him. I no, think. no, Zarl Didn't shows they? up. Zarl shows up. Um, who's us grabs Octavia by like the neck mm -hmm. and and starts running away with her. Oh, okay. And then they and they lead the thing into the into a room that has like 30 raptors in the air. Oh, right, right, right. That's the I will eat your eyeballs moment, right? Yeah. Right, and then right, they right. all like pounce it and then kill yes, it. Yes, right. Oh god, how did I forget that? I literally um, referenced it at the beginning of this episode. What the fuck? <laughs> Lucorifus eats a lot, it's okay. He does. <laughs> he eats a lot of eyeballs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that whole, yeah, that whole fight was, I was quite, I, I was surprised how much emotion I felt for a little mutant freak boy. I know, I was, and, and, well, it doesn't help that, like, as he's dying, like, on his deathbed with Octavia, he's telling Octavia how much she reminds him of her daughter that he used to have, and it's like, oh. Stop, and man. He's like, oh no, mistress, it's raining, and it's just her tears. And yeah. you're like, fuck, oh, dude. Yeah. It got me it got me a little teary eye when I reread it. I was like, shit, yep. this is fucking sad. Little See? little little creepy yeah. Ein Sohn shut freaky boy. Yes. And in reality, they would have all died if he didn't shoot him in the mm -hmm. in the back of the mouth. So it's like in Full Metal Alchemist when uh, Roy Mustang is is crying and the ladies and he's like, "Oh, look, it's raining," and she's like, "What? No, it's not." And he's like, "It's pouring," because he's crying. Oh, is that what that's from? Yeah, Full Metal. Alchemist. Is his name actually Roy Mustang? Yep, Roy Mustang's dope. He snaps his finger and it and uh, he summons fire. I think. That's cool and all, but that name is so like 
like Southern Californian. <laughs> yeah, it is. I bet he drives a Mustang. He would. He probably does. He would. But but that, that makes it even more for why Maruk's death was so weird because Hound's death took the show. Yeah, maybe that's why. Because all you remember is like, oh my god, not Hound, Hound, Hound. It's like, uh, Maruk was in here somewhere. But it's like, oh no, Hound. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah. Uh, but during all of this, though, flip over to the other side. <laughs> uh, the Covenant of Blood is under attack Big by time. everybody. <laughs> everybody. Every Red Corsair ship is on their ass. They're doing a valiant job of, of surviving, though. The Exalted is uh, doing his thing. Um, yeah, he's killing a lot. He's he's flipping and spinning and... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, Exalted is, uh, is having to fend off uh, Vandred, right? That in, was... his, in his mind, he's fighting off Vandred. Yeah, that was great because he was struggling with keeping up in the Void War, and so he had to keep reaching further and further, and Vandred basically kind of grabbed him by the wrist and pulled him down to where he used to be. Yep. And he, Vandred took over his body again, and he's like, oh my god. <laughs> what um, the fuck happened to me? <laughs> but there's some really, like, small details that are pretty great, because mm -hmm. he's talking with, uh, Talos over the, over the Vox, and, mm -hmm. you know, he's talking about, hey, you know, don't, don't sacrifice yourself I'll rather die, and yeah. like, you'll be remembered, Vandre. And he's like, I prefer not to be. Oh, right. Yep. And he even has the yep. small part when he voxes the whole ship, and he says, this is the captain, instead of this, this is, is the, the exalted. exalted. Yep. yep. It says that little detail where it's like, that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's a great detail. There were also a lot of little things when he was like Vandre, where like he wasn't used to his body. Like he found it hard giving orders because of how sharpened his teeth were. Like, or his was... giant arm claw mm -hmm. thing. Uh, those are nice little touches. Like he just really wasn't used to being a chaos demon as yeah, was a nice little touch. It's it's, it's good. And at the end of it, basically all the survivors that could be surviving went and bailed, uh, took escape pods over to, um, the Echo of Damnation, mm -hmm. and then after that, it was uh, the boss bi bi moment. <laughs> big old, big old, awesome moment where Vandred's fucking around, killing everything, doing really good job. Oh, and yeah. right when he's about to die, he just kind of dips and he lets the Exalted take its form yep. again, just Doesn't... so he can have a last moment of death. <laughs> yep. Doesn't he say before he switches, like, "I hope you feel this," and then I just... hope this hurts. Yes, and then the ship. <laughs> And the Exalted just screaming, howling. Oh, that was satisfying. That it was, was so incredibly satisfying. satisfying. Oh, it was yeah. awesome to have Vandred kind of show why he was such a good leader, or such a good, like, uh, Void War guy, and then just kind of pull out, and then bada-boom. Bada-bing. Bada-bam. And, and then they said that the Atramentar were gone. They're not. There's no way. Yeah, they 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 must have somehow gotten out. There's no way you got rid of like the all all of the Night Lord, or I guess. The, I mean, the Atramentar, they Terminators have teleporters. They oh, very they? much could oh, have okay. teleported onto like a Red Corsair ship and just beaten the fuck out of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So that, that, I, I that's very so. possible. Yeah, because there's some there's some good Atramentar. Some of them are kind of dickheads, but I think Malak. Malak and like Garadon the, are the big Malik ones. Malak and Garadon, yeah. I know Malak has always like had Talos' back as much as he could, right? Yeah, he's pretty cool. Yeah, Malak is um, cool. So. But then like Deltrian arrived, and we got a lot of good Deltrian in this book we didn't talk much yeah. about, but Talos, I, I like a lot of I, it, they, they keep it a little bit of a secret, but Talos sees Deltrian fleeing, and he sees what Deltrian has, and he's like, "Oh my, f fuck you, Del you, m you piece of shit! What are you doing?" And I'm just like, "What the fuck could Deltrian possibly have that would make Talos like? He's furious. He's like, you guys aren't gonna believe what Deltrian's got, that motherfucker." And I'm like, "Whoa, <laughs> like Talos, easy. Like, what does he have? Like, the Exalted's head or something? Like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> He'd be okay with that. Yeah, he you, um." Idea. Wait, do you know what he has? Yeah. Oh yeah. He, yeah, 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 you know. he has um Well did was did that does that happen in Void Stalker or Yeah, it ha well yeah, yeah, it happens in Void Stalker. We'll we'll wait then. We'll wait then. No but... no no. I, I think they mention what he has 
near the very end of Blood Reaver. I don't think he wakes up, but they're like, um, oh, yeah. Oh, well, he, well, well, now, well, well, now there's no way to stop it. Yeah, he's got yeah. Malkarian's fucking thing. Yeah, he has Malkarian's dread Dreadnought, or is it just the sarcophagus? Uh, the Dreadnought sarcophagus is kind of a thing. Yeah. So. And Talos is like, Deltrin, why the fuck do you have that? And he's like, oh, huh. Well, I, I didn't want to do it, but I got orders higher up than yours to bring him with me and save him. And it I think was... that's I think that's Voidstalker because I haven't read that part yet. So No, I I remember reading that part and I haven't started Voidstalker yet. I thought you started Voidstalker. Mm, not yet. I was Shit, gonna I mean, wait until after I mean, we oh, did. No, this I think episode. that was like the last like five minutes of the book then. That yeah, was it's, really it's late. Really close to okay. the end. I think I just um, forgot about that. Yeah, but the orders came from Malik, I think, yes. right? Malik was like, hey, maybe you should go ahead and keep a hold of uh, our dreadnought. Of... Mm. I, I don't know why I can never get his name right. Malkarian, so, the war I, sage. For some reason, I'm always like, oh, yeah, it's Malkador. It's like, no, no, wrong M. <laughs> Malkarian? Come, Mal from Mal his work, Mal the Tenebrous Path. Come on, they say like 20 times in the I first know. book. But for some reason, there are just so many M names floating around in my head that I never, I can just, I never get it right the first time. Whatever. Anyway, you all know who he is. Well, regardless, the book ends with a very nice moment, which is Reuven being like, Hey, gang, how's it going? I sure can't wait for some great times together as he's just fucking sliced in half on the chest. Yeah. And he's oh just, God. like, crawling, <laughs> bleeding to death, and all the Night Lords are looking down on him. And it's like that meme with the Pepe who, like, dropped his plate of food, <laughs> yeah. and there's a shadow over him, and he's like, uh -huh. <laughs> right. and He's like, this is for Secundus and all the bullshit you are. We don't need you anymore. Yep. Die. Yep, you're a traitor, and you surely would have betrayed us, too. Now die. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, he's just like, hey, gang, where are we going to go to next? This is going to be a great time. I'm so glad to be back among my brothers. They even uh, gave him uh, Night Lord armor, didn't they? Uh, yeah, they did. <laughs> Flump. Bisected him and oof. And then uh, I think Vario literally just, uh, uh, Vario skins him, flays him, and I think Talos wants his body to be hung up on the command deck? Yep, in the war for, room or whatever. Everybody to see. Yep. Yep. It's pretty it's pretty Night Lord Z and it's yeah. it's immensely satisfying. You get what you fucking deserve, Murray. You get what you fucking deserve, Reuven. <laughs> you get what you fucking deserve. Though there was a part of me that was actually kind of hoping that Reuven did actually become part of the group. Just because he is that sort of shit lord and you're just kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop with him. But at the same time, I'm not unhappy with the fact that he got absolutely fucking wrecked at the end of the book. Yeah, it's mm, yeah. very, it's very nice. It's very satisfying. Mm -hmm. I am, I am more than a fan. Yep. Uh, but that is Blood Reaver, I think. Yep. They, they do have a short, uh, epilogue. Short little, little epilogue, but I, I'd rather not talk about that one because that's. Okay. I think they, they think they actually like replay the same epilogue in the beginning of Void Stalker. Okay, so it's literally just like, hey, here's the first. This is essentially like the first ten pages of Void Stalker. Yes. Okay. I, so yeah, we'll, I we'll talk think, about it next time then. Yes, it, it's. I really like this book. It's my favorite of the three. Uh, lots of good backstory. Lots of new characters. Almost all of them good. Maruk, Variel, Deltrium, even here on Blackheart is pretty great. Mm-hmm. Um, you learn more about Mercutian, that, that uh, little section of Talos and Zarl's kids was fucking crazy. Yep, Uzas being sort of clear, clear and concise, and it being super sad, because Talos is like, oh, I missed that. I miss my and brother. It's interesting, too, because Uzas swears that he never, ever killed Akir. That's true, till the end of the book, he's like, it wasn't me. I don't know what to tell you. If you don't believe me, fine, whatever. But I know I didn't do it. Oh, we almost forgot. Because he's got of that, the gauntlets. He, he's got the sitter's gauntlets. He's got the red gauntlets. When that part happened, I was like, I learned about that. I get it. Yes. Yes, he's been he's been uh, branded sinner's red. Sinner's red. And he's like, where am I gonna get where red gonna paint? paint? Yeah. Just use all the blood on the ground, bud. Jeez. Yeah, good old. 
Yeah. And at the end, he actually does show up with red gauntlets. He does? Yep. A lot of times I forget that Uzas has a cape. Uzas has a cape? He has a cape of a noble family. Oh. It was their skin. Oh, right. That's true. He was also like, I think he was also either murdering or violating a woman. And she put her hand on his faceplate and left that bloody handprint, which is why he has the bloody handprint on the face. Oh. Because, you know, oh, Uzas. Oh, Uzas. <laughs> oh, Uzas. But, yeah. For some anyway. reason, when you said that, all I could think of was, that's just Uzas, and it's like a an 80s theme song. It's like a sitcom. Yeah, and it just shows Uzas, like, shrugging his shoulders with a big smile on his face in black and white. <laughs> He's pretty, Uzas is pretty sus. It's pretty true. Yeah. All right. We've been going for a long time. Uh, yeah. The next book will be Void Stalker. Uh, my second favorite, though I would say it has the most problems. Oh, um, is it like too quick of a finish, or are they do? No, they no, no, no. I just there are just things in it that I think I think okay. it has the most uh, issues for me, but it also has some of the highest highs. Okay. Uh, cool. So it's like it's the stuff that's in it is really good, but then there are some things that I don't like. Okay. But overall, I still like it more than Soul Hunter, and Soul Hunter is fucking great. So yeah, they're all really good. Um, but yeah, Blood Raver probably better than Soul Hunter. So it's just been getting better and better. So yeah, I'm looking forward to Void Stalker. It'll be pretty good. We'll do that one next month. Ooh. And then after that, we're going to be reading Caiaphas Cain. Ah, so. the main lord. Everybody keeps telling me about Caiaphas Cain and how I need to see it. And it's lighthearted and he stumbles his way into success somehow. And yeah. So we'll be doing that soon. Thank you everyone for watching. It was a pleasure. You can find me at Bricky on yeah. places. You can find DK at DK at places. Well, it's DK Diamantes at places, but yeah. You can... Well, yeah, that too. Uh, yeah, and Chai's yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. No challenge. blood. No blood, no skulls. No skulls. <laughs> <laughs>